Okay, today we're going to cover graphing screw functions, and this is actually a scaled down version of what's in our textbook today, but we're just going with the very simple part of it. We've been talking about square roots all chapter, so now we're actually going to graph them. So to start off, remember that a square root function is any function that contains a square root with the independent variable in the radicand. So what does that really look like? That looks like y equals the square root of x. This is our parent square root function. Okay, And just like anything, when you need to graph it, you should be able to give a table of values and you get to pick the x values. So if I'm going to do the square root function, I want to pick numbers that are going to come out nice and even. So I'm going to pick 0, 1, 4, and 9. Because the square root of 0, I'm plugging it into this equation, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I am going to go plot those points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. So I'm going to connect them. I know that they don't look exactly like a line, but they do have a shape of that sort. That is the general shape of our square root function, and the sooner you can memorize it, the better. Uh, but if you are not satisfied or not interested, please feel free to go and continue to pick any points greater than zero and plug them into the equation. No, why did I say greater than zero? Why does it have to be bigger than zero? Because we have to remember the radicand, as I just said, ha cannot be negative because I cannot take the square root of a negative number. And we're going to use this to find the domain of square root functions. What is the domain? Remember when we're talking about x and y, the domain is all the values that we can plug in for x and still have a real function. So to do that, we have to go identify the radicand and make sure that radicand is greater than or equal to 0. So in my first problem, my radicand, my students had no trouble remembering. That's the part underneath the radical. So that is 3x minus 9 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Then we quickly remember that we are going to add 9 to both sides. And 0 plus 9 is 9. Those nines cancel out, so we've got 3x is greater than or equal to 9. Divide both sides by 3. And x is greater than or equal to 3. So my domain is all values of x, such that the x is greater than or equal to 3. All right, look at our next one. What is the domain of y equals square root of negative 2x plus 5. So my radicand, everything underneath that radical, so that means negative 2x plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Subtract our 5, because we're trying to get x by itself. So that leaves me with negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Then we're going to divide by negative 2 and x is now less than or equal to 5 halves. If you want to put it as a decimal, put it as a decimal. I'm thinking I don't need to make the extra step. Okay, so hopefully you noticed when I did that that something changed besides the simple multiplication. But that sign changed from one step to the next. So remember, especially now because we're dealing with inequalities, remember to flip the greater than or less than when dividing or multiplying
by a negative number. All right, that'll just help you get the right answer when you're working. Okay, so moving along, we're going to talk about our graphs. We have our parent function that we just talked about, y equals the square root of x. And we have some key points. And the key points are really 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, 3. Because the vertex, or that starting point, is 0, 0. Until, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, we have talked about the a. When we had an a being multiplied, we talked about a lot with our quadratic functions and our parabolas. But that a value affects the y. And we remember that we do the same thing to the y. So we multiply each y value by this a. And of course, corresponding to x, and that part won't change. And then we're back to um, y equals the square root of x minus h plus k. We've talked about this again with our parabolas, but this is when we have h and k. And that's our starting point. That's when it won't be 0 and 0 anymore but h and k, and when we're trying to identify that from the equation, remember that we take the opposite of what h is, and we take the same for the value of k. Alrighty now, so let's go look at our function, and what we want to do is first and foremost, you want to identify that vertex or that starting point. So, uh, to do that, I need to know what that 4 is. Does that 4 represent an A, an H, or a K? And it represents H because it is inside underneath the radical, and when you're underneath the radical, that's H. So that's going to make my vertex, remember the H, we do the opposite, so my vertex is at negative 4, 0. Okay, well that looks crazy. Negative 4, 0. 0. Then we talk about what a is, and a is 1. And if a is 1, I get to use my key points like they are. 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, and 3. So negative 4, 0 is my starting point. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then from that point, I always start back. This is what I'm going to go over and up. It's not the actual plotting of the point. It's over and up from the vertex. So if I go over 1, I'm going to go up 1. If I go over 4, I'm going to go up 2. If I go over 9, I'm going to go up 5. I'm going to have a hard time counting. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, I go up 3. So what I did here is I went over 9 and then up 3 to get to that point. And now, it's because it's this eraser, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I don't like that one. I'm going to try one more time. So, because I got a little bit high on that first one there, that's better. Okay? So we got a little bit of a curve. Do your best to make it curve. Alright, let's go to the second one. Or the next one, I should say. Y equals 2 times the square root of X. What is that 2? Is it A, or is it H, or is it K? And hopefully you said A, because it's multiplying the radical. It's not adding or subtracting like the other two. So that means that my starting point is 0, 0. Sometimes we like to go ahead and plot that so we don't lose track of what we're doing. So if I put 0, 0 as our starting point, then I've got my key points, 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, 3. We have an A value that's not 1, so now we have to look and remember that that changes my Y's. Actually, oh, I think that's the thing. Actually, I think I'm safe there. All right, so let's go change my Y values. And this time, uh, that doesn't move me over. So sorry. Let's go here, so that's pointing to the Y's. One, <coughs> excuse me, four, nine, one, two, three, 
Gotta love pollen this time of year. So, from my zero, zero. Okay. Let's back up one second, because the pollen really got me there. One, four, nine. Because A is equal to two, I have to multiply each of my A values, I mean my Y values, by two. One times two, two times two, and three times two. So from zero, zero, and again, remember this is over and up. So if I go over one, I'm going to go up two. If I go over one, two, three, four, I'm going to go up four. If I go over nine, I've got to go up six. So I connect my dots to make it look like a curve. And then we have our square root function of y equals 2 times the square root of x. Okay? Um, Alright, number 12 says y equals the uh, square root of x plus 5. So we have, um, however you want to decide, we like to decide what is that 5? Is it a, h, or k? It is not underneath the radical, so it's not h. It's not multiplying by the radical, so it's not a. Therefore, it's k. And h is 0, so k is 5. That's my starting point. a is equal to 1, so I get to use my key points without any changes. 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, 3. So, my starting point is 0, 5. That's 0, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I go over 1, up 1. Over 4, up 2. And over 9, up 3. And again, we're going to connect them. Try that one more time. One more time. Yeah, that's better. That one looks better. Okay. So, before we do this last one, I want to point out we did one change of each one. Okay? My H took my original graph and shifted it to the left. Okay? It's always the opposite when you're dealing with H. My 2 on the outside actually stretched my graph, as we set up there. And then K affects my Y value, so it took that graph and shifted it up because my original function would be right there. So this is going to be a graph that's going to have everything in it. Okay, so this is my A, this is my H, and this is my K. My vertex is 6, 1, and A, of course, is 5. So I have my original key points of 1, 4, 9, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to change my y values, 1, 4, 9 are my x's, and a is equal to 5, so I'm going to multiply each of these numbers by 5, so 1 times 5, 2 times 5, 3 times 5, and again, this is my over and up. So, where's my starting point? Starting point's the vertex of 6, 1. So that's over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1. And from there, I'm going to go over 1, up 5. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And over 4, up 10. So I go up 10 from there. It's just one off of my graph. And we go ahead and grab it so we can just get some idea of what it's going to look like. And there we have our graph. So that has applied all of our changes to it. And we have now summed up graphing square root functions.